all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivereth the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him? False witnesses did rise up, they laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned unto mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity they rejoiced, and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me, and cease not. Hypocritical mockers and feast, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Hello, I'm Jake Gardner, and this is Ryan Ringnald, and we are two of the three elders of the Church of Wells, and this is the first of a series of videos on the Church of Wells Responds.com, where we're going to seek to do that very thing. We're going to seek to respond specifically um, to a series of videos which were produced by Tony Miano of Cross Encounters Ministries, um, alongside of Andrew Rappaport of Striving for Eternity Ministries and Matt Slick with CARM and we desire to respond to these um, certain videos that were made against us and we will in, in the following pages and just below this video you'll see um, links, hyperlinks and where we respond to the certain video um, questions that were issued to us. We desire to begin, believe that it would be expedient if we began um, regarding the Cornelute brothers who were the former pastors of the Street Church in Adelaide, um, Samuel and Caleb, which we came in contact with in May of 2013. I believe that that would be the most um, profitable place to begin with you and detailing where we have come now in the past year and a half and how the different persecutions arose around the spring, February um, through April approximately of 2014. And so I'm going to let Ryan begin here with the context of our relationship with the Cornelute Brothers and Street Church. I'd just like to share the background as Jake had introduced of the context of our relationship with, with Samuel Cornelute and Caleb Cornelute. And I want to say as a backdrop and as far as I'm concerned, I love both these men and I have loved these men and it grieves my heart and it grieves my soul and it has brought tears to my eyes the way that these men have treated us and abused our friendship and our kindness to them and have followed division with us and not followed peace and forsaken charity and, and taken up a root of bitterness against us. It truly does break my heart. But the backdrop for our relationship with Street Church, as far as the Church of Wells is concerned, and even as far as I'm concerned as an individual, and Brother Jake is concerned, we, we were introduced to Street Church around May of 2013. And around that time, many of the disciples and members of the Church of Wells began to speak to many of the members of the Street Church of that time, which has been divided since that time. And because of that, we felt that it was appropriate to reach out to the eldership at Street Church, which was Samuel Cornerloop and Caleb Cornerloop, and to develop a communication, a relationship via correspondence, and to follow peace with them. Truly, that was our heart. That was our desire. We loved them. We prayed for them. Even I can remember back in May praying for them and being burdened for, for, for their good and for your good if you're watching this Samuel Cornerloop and Caleb Cornerloop. And so this made the way that our relationship has been severed and has ended all the worse. That was in May, and so I'd reached out to Samuel Cornerloop and Samuel, Samuel asked me about the vision for the Church of Wells. And so I wrote a little statement. I took some time and I prayed and sought the Lord and, 
and, and spend some, some real time to put it together and make it acceptable. And I still have that document. I'm, I'm not going to read it right now. And I sent that to Samuel Cornerloop, and he never responded to me. And then after that, I, I messaged Caleb Cornerloop sometime around June, July of 2013. And I reminded him of how I had sent that to Samuel Cornerloop, and I asked him to get back to me. And he, he also, he said that he would, but he didn't get back to me. And it was a grief to my heart. And truly, my desire was for peace and for unity and, and to be unified with all those that love Jesus Christ. And truly, charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And so, in the truth of God and His Word, I wanted unity. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Unity. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace is a command of God. Ephesians 4.1 And then, in October, finally, we began to speak and communicate and, and seek after this meeting. And... And we began to correspond some via Facebook until around October 16th or 17th, we had a meeting. Uh, that was myself, Sean Morris, and Brother Jake Gardner met with Caleb Cornerloop and Samuel Cornerloop via Skype. And in that meeting, we spake, and, and it went very well. I have the result. This is what I sent to Caleb and Samuel on Facebook after that meeting. This was 12.25 p.m. on October 17th. I said, Caleb and Samuel, all three of us were very thankful or were thankful for the conversation we had. We left with hope that the Lord could bring unity in the truth of His words and edification to us all, truly. Thank you for the encouraging time. And I'll go down, skip ahead a little bit. I said, please let me know if this works, Caleb. I will attach our vision document that I formally sent to Samuel to this email. The Lord bless you men and grant us help in the meeting. I believe the vision statement will be an important topic of discussion amidst other needed things. We will be praying for you all and for the meeting. Please pray for us, your servants, Ryan Ringnall. And what we had spake about in that first meeting was merely introducing ourselves, greeting, greeting them, and they greeted us, and they shared their testimonies, which we were very impacted by, and received them as brethren. As true Christians, we were thankful for all that God had done in their lives, and we shared our testimonies with them, and the conversation went really well. Samuel Cornelup, in response to the first conversation we had had in October, said this, was a blessing to talk face to face with you guys. I truly am sorry that I, did not, that, that I did not respond earlier. I didn't realize how it upset you, Ryan. I truly didn't mean to cause any problems between us. I think I kept putting my response off as I, as I wasn't sure what to write back. And then a few months later, some concerns came in. Nevertheless, I was very happy we were able to catch up. Much love. That was on October 17th, 2013. And I would that the vocabulary and I would that the heart of our relationship had stayed like that. That was the first meeting. The second meeting, which is where the great slander, slanderous video greatly reviling us and railing against us and accusing us of, of very outlandish and unrighteous and unfounded things that is spread abroad throughout the internet. That was taken from part of the conversation we had in November of 2013. And in that conversation, we spake some about doctrine and we, we, we again greeted one another and there was much kindness seemingly up, fr up front and there was much, there were smiles and, and there was seeming, there was love and, and we loved them and, and we wanted to honor Jesus Christ and our heart was we were seeking for unity with them. We don't want to be, you know, alone without our brethren. If they're our brethren, if they love Jesus Christ, they love His Word and they're bounded by the Word of God, we want to pursue a relationship with them. That was our endeavor, striving together for the faith of the gospel with these men and to walk in the light with these men and if they are in the light of Jesus Christ and His Word. And in response to that message and that uh, to that I'm sorry meeting that we had, Caleb Cornelup sent me this on November 8th, 2013, at 4:33 a.m. And I'm sharing this that you might understand the heart of that meeting that we had, and how grievous the slander campaign that sent Caleb Cornelup sent against us afterwards really was. In light of this backdrop, in light of this seeming kindness and goodwill and, and charity that he that he had, he said this. Hi, Ryan. I just wanted to let you guys know that I really enjoyed our discussion last night. The doctrinal subject was something I think we really should sort out. I appreciate your openness regarding your family issues. They seem very sensitive and I hope, as you do, I'm sure that you will eventually find reconciliation between yourselves. Although we are not in agreement on the doctrinal issue we discussed, I think it is something we must go through as a matter of course in seeking unity. In our church, we have very lengthy and intense debates on subjects such as these. I hope we did not come across contentious or unloving. No doubt there is much we agree on, 
and these things ought to give us joy. I do feel as though I am getting to know you all as we have listened to you all. Perhaps as the next meeting, at the next meeting, Ryan can bring up the issue he wanted to discuss. I am busy this weekend because I have to prepare a sermon for Sunday. Perhaps I will touch base again with you all on Monday via Facebook in Christ. And that was, that was Caleb Cornelou, November 8, 2013. It was after that that I'm going to let Brother Jake pick up from here. It was after that that, that we, were, we were basically slandered. On, the, on, on video format by Caleb Cornelope and slandered all over the internet without an apology. We were framed. We were smeared. It was a smear campaign against us. And it was out of context. This was the context. Numerous times in messages, which I won't share right here, not having time, I shared my love for them. We shared our love that we love these men. We love you men. We're thankful. I shared a message that I'm not going to read about how I was thankful for that conversation that we had had. By all appearances, things were well. But as those that have seen the Caleb Cornelup video know, things were obviously not well in their hearts, not in truth. And this is all very concerning. I want to say on top of what Ryan has just said, we made it very clear in the last of the two conversations that we had in November that this was by no means a doctrinal um, declaration of what we believe concerning abiding in Christ or willful sin. Um, we by no means were prepared to make those answers. We had um, none of the scriptures before us um, necessarily laid out in a, in a clear, succinct way, manner of answering them, um, but the questions were just sprung upon us, and that's why in the video that uh, Caleb had put together, splicing up a many hour conversation I believe it at least was three hours the entire conversation where he spliced up just a few of the sound bites from it um, that's why oftentimes we're just kind of halting and at a standstill of what to say we're just looking at one another um, knowing that these things are very deep and having gone through these uh, matters for years and for hours upon hours and by no means um, lacking clear definition of what we believe in these matters, that's not our reason for halting, but knowing how deep these things are. And oftentimes when there's not proper charity and unity and an understanding that we need to go into these things um, together in charity, in love, with a non-contentious, confrontational environment, um, that it's going to take hours to go through these things or else they will be divisive and they have been throughout history. History has proven that to be the case. So that alone being our declaration to these men that this is not the end, this is not um, a succinct declaration or definition of what we believe about these doctrines at all, we made that abundantly clear um, in this recording that he has not produce, at least that part of it he has not produced. Um, it's just amazing. Truly, it's, it's been astonishing to us that he would make such a recording and just jumping on the bandwagon uh, with all these other men at, that, at such a time as that spring of 2014 when all these men began to come out um, against us in a, in a very clear way. I um, I believe it was no more than a month. It was December 8th, um, 2013. That was about a month, approximately, <coughs> a month after we had had this conversation with them that Ryan has just spoken about, this same conversation that he made this video from. It was a month later, just to show you um, whether this was in truth or whether it was in pretense, we don't know. All we know is within a couple of months, he would take this secret recording that he made of us uh, which it was, that very thing, it was secret, we knew nothing of it, and he spliced it up. This is what he's saying just a month after to me in a private Facebook message, December 8, 2013, 646 a.m. from Caleb. <clears throat> I quote in whole, Hi, dear brother. Hope I find you and your family well. I would love to Skype you sometime. Sam is finding it difficult to find time to Skype, and I wanted to spend time in fellowship with you. I don't know too much about the whole issue with Ryan's father-in-law, and I don't feel it's my concern. I enjoyed 
our theological discussion and wanted to spend more time one-on-one -on -one so it's a little less intense and we can joke around a bit in fellowship and perhaps spend time in prayer and weeping together. God bless. <clears throat> this was a completely different tone than what Caleb would take in just a couple of months against us with no uh, interim communications, no interim discoursing or um, correspondence between us. He would just change his behavior suddenly upon us from this to what you've seen in the video. And something that has been very obvious in which I believe the Spirit of God, if your conscience, dear remnant brethren, dear watchers and listeners of this video, if your conscience was sensitive, the Spirit of God, I believe, would have compelled you and convicted you. A man cannot make such a video, such a, a, a slanderous, <coughs> derogatory video, um, de defaming true brethren of the Lord Jesus Christ without producing the entire recording. Sure, he said in this video that I'm not going to produce it all. I don't want to play it all. They just spoke a lot. They used many words. But for such a declaration that we believe in works righteousness, that we, believe, we don't believe in the efficacy of the blood, etc., 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 these terribly venomous, slanderous accusations against us and the testimony that we hold as the Church of Wells, to make this video and yet nowhere in a link alongside of the video, nowhere producing a hyperlink to it, a, a complete um, production of the entire conversation. It's absolutely absurd and it should be a, a, a sting upon each individual conscience which watched it and believed it, received it, without hearing our testimony. It's absolutely absurd and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at the behavior of God's people as it touches this specific situation, this video, but then this video goes into the entire um, spring of 2013 when Paul Washer and Mark Glass and Hartcry uh, Missionary Society, uh, Tony Miano and Cross Encounters and Matt Slick and Andrew Rappaport have come, ag come against us. This all goes together and they fed off of one another. <clears throat> and it's, a, it's, it's been truly an amazing thing to us to behold this. Desire to make known as well in December, approximately a week following this message from Caleb Cornerloop to me on December 8th, 2013, roughly a week or half a week passed. And on the Sunday, I believe it was the Lord's Day, we got news that Samuel had fallen and this sin now has been made publicly manifest before the whole nation actually of Australia um, and it had just reached our ears here <clears throat> in Texas at that time and I remember as, as I heard this I took the pulpit for this church which Samuel and Caleb have stood so firmly and steadfastly resolutely against I stood before these brethren and I read David's song of Jonathan and Saul, How Are the Mighty Fallen. I read this before the brethren and I fell upon my face and we wept and many of the brethren fell upon their face as well and we wept for Samuel Cornerloop and Caleb Cornerloop and the street church in Adelaide and the desolations of the Lord in this generation. How the mighty are falling on every side. The, the godly man is failing. The faithful are ceasing from among the sons of men. We wept for these men and I believe that it is it is a very significant token of the displeasure of God against them that no more than a month after secretly recording true saints of God and dwelt by his Holy Ghost you can't do that and 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 get away with it God does not take that lightly if you touch the apple of God's eye God will touch you God will judge you and I believe that they still are undergoing this judgment it has not gotten better it's only gotten worse they've had multiple divisions since this judgment came upon them and I don't believe that the judgment will end until they repent of these sins which God is manifestly marking 
and we wept for them. And I don't say that I cannot glory, we cannot glory in these things which Christ evidently has wrought in us and by us. This is not us. This is not who we are in our own fallen, depraved, Adamic nature. We are sinners to the core in this old man, but this new man created in Christ Jesus under good works, this Spirit of God in us has welled up in us to weep for you, men. We've wept for you, Tony Miano. We've wept for you, Andrew Rappaport, Matt Slick, Paul Washer, Mark Glass, Samuel and Caleb Cornwood, Forbes Morrison. We have wept for you. And in your sickness, we have been girded with sackcloth. And I do not say that lightly. I say it before the presence of God as our witness. And I just ask the remnant. I ask you men that are beholding me now, beholding us now in this video. I bear witness to your conscience. And I just ask you before God, have you wept for us? And all of your smiting and all of your judgment of us. Have you wept? Have your eyes trickled down for the slain of the daughter of your people? Are you bearing the burden of God and truth? May God bear me witness in these words. I'd like to ask Caleb Cornelup and Samuel Cornelup. I'd like to ask Mark Glass and Paul Washer. I'd like to ask all of you men have you men had charity for your brethren? Have you men had charity for us? We have loved you. We have written very kind-hearted messages to you, Mark Glass. And have you responded in such a way? We have loved you, Samuel Cornelope and Caleb Cornelope. We have, on numerous occasions, shared with you, or I have, on Facebook, that I love you men, that we love you men. And truly, we have desired good. We have desired peace and unity. We have desired to speak to, to you, whom we have considered our brethren. We have treated you as a brother, Mark Glass. We have treated you, Paul Washer, as even a father in the faith and treated you. Have you all returned the favor? Or have you men answered a matter before you've heard it, which is a folly and a shame? Or have you men considered us guilty before being, being proven so and not heard the cry of your brethren? to talk to you men, to talk to you, brothers, in the Lord. Truly, it says in Proverbs, the soul of the wicked desireth evil, and his neighbor findeth no favor in his sight. And truly, we have found no favor in your sight. And y'all have de desired evil against us. Mark Glass, you came under that video of Street Church with these railing accusations that we preach works righteousness, and these things are not so. And you did not even seek to understand what we really believe. When we wanted to correspond, we wanted to speak, you devoured us. Truly, you devoured that which is holy and afterward have vowed to make inquiry according to the Scripture. We have been treated truly as, as less than human, as less than, than American, as less than obviously Christian. It's a great calamity that has been done in Zion. When you fell, Samuel, in sin, and you stepped down as being an elder, we wept for you, Samuel. We were not glad at calamities. The Bible says, He that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. We have not forsaken charity for you men, but you have forsaken charity for us. And there's a reason why we are burdened for your soul, Paul Washer. Dear sir, and there's a reason why we're burdened for your soul, Mark Glass. Read the correspondence between the Church of Wells, and yourself, dear sir. And there's a reason why we're grieved and burdened over you, Cornelup brothers. Truly, we, and we considered you brothers. And we heard your testimonies. We had a great Skype, couple of Skype conversations. And, and y'all said that you were thankful. And we said that we were thankful. And we shared that we, lo we loved you. We had compassion for you. Have you forgotten? It says in 1 Corinthians 13, dear sirs, that charity suffereth long and is kind, good willed. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh not evil. Charity thinketh not evil. Have you men thought evil of us? 
Again, have you been answered a matter before you've heard it? We're making this video and we're making this response, the Church of Wells response.com in self-defense. We have been assaulted. You men have made a smear campaign against us. You men have answered a matter. You men have judged us, having not even known us. When we have desired to re reach out and to seek you, and many say, why are there no one that is standing with the Church of Wells? Why is there no pastor that will lay hands upon them? Why is there no church that receives them? And the truth of the matter is, we have sought for other churches that would receive us in the Lord, according to the written word of God, like you men. And we have been rejected, and our cries have not been heard, but they have come before the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has heard them. The Lord knows the righteous. He knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And so I share again, I finish this passage in 1 Corinthians 13. And I ask you, have you had charity for us? Without charity it profiteth you nothing, though you burn at a stake, according to this passage from the Apostle Paul. Or though you give all that you have to the poor, if you have not charity, it is nothing. It profiteth you nothing, dear leaders of, of the remnant, dear brothers in the Lord, that are not abiding in Christ, or you'd have charity for your brethren. Charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. May the Lord hear the right. May the Lord judge betwixt us who is on the Lord's side.